Hi everyone, it's Marcy from Prints and Paints. Uh, today I wanted to quickly do a demonstration on swooshes. I noticed a lot of people struggle with these, so I wanted to just show a quick basic um, how-to. So I'm just using a basic um, acrylic paint, Deco Art. This is from the brand Americana. It's gray, I think it's called zinc. Um, I'm just doing this so that you can see the color on the white paper here. Um, so I'm just going to add a tiny little bit. And then I'm also going to thin this out with uh, some of this Liquitex. And this is matte fluid medium. If you got gel, this would thicken it up. So remember, if you want thicker paint, either use it straight out of the bottle. If it's not thick enough, use gel, medium gel. If you want thinner, use medium fluid. Okay. So with this, we're just going to add, I'd say, so if you have one part here, you're going to want to do about a quarter of the part. Not much. And then just... Uh, Get something to mix it with. And then this should help thin out the paints. All right. Good. Now, I'm also going to be having a video that's working side by side to me so that you can see up close how to do these swooshes and I'll try to splice them together on this video so that you can see it properly. Okay, so I'm going to basically take um, a couple different sizes and I'm going to show you how to create the basic swoosh that is out there. And then from there we'll try a couple different variations. Um, I am using the DIY uh, Mandela dotting tools. I find that these seem to be the best on the market. Um, I haven't tried Happy Dotting Tools or Marks. So I know Marks is a different size than this. So uh, if you want to um, try those at hand, please do so. I, I don't think this is going to change how the swooshes look. Uh, really it's just the dot is a little different than this one but it's not a big deal what you really want to learn is how to create um, your swoosh correct so um, I'm gonna start with a larger one um, something that I've pretty much used I don't really make gigantic swooshes so we're going to try the size 15 dotting tool um, 15 and uh, we're gonna work from there. I'm also going to be working with one of these small stylist. This is the smallest stylist tool that I have on the, uh, I believe you could probably find on the market. I don't know if there's something smaller than this one. It is extremely small. So, um, so you're gonna wanna have one of these small ones to pull your paints and then this is going to dot it. So, um, to get our paints, we already thinned it out, and now we're going to dip that paint in the dotting tool until you get a nice amount that's almost like dripping off the dotting tool. Do you see? Okay. And then we're going to take our paper and we're going to lightly dot it down. I'm just lightly pressing on the paper so that I see that circle forming. I am not doing this, pushing it hard down. I'm lightly tapping it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my paint again. And then I'm going to dot it again lightly so that I start forming this bubble. Okay. 
and then from there I'm gonna move in on this one as well so we're gonna we're gonna move in on this one as well and focus okay all right let's move this one <laughs> just getting my camera set up here so you can see it all right so so once again one more time we're gonna do it I usually do this about twice but we can do it a little bit more. Now you see I'm I'm barely touching that paper. I'm really just almost making the acrylic paint that's on there pull the paint that's from my dotting tool. It's almost like using this as an eyedropper, if you think about it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my small stylist and I'm gonna dot it right in the center of my dot. And from there, I'm going to either pull up away from me or I'm going to pull down. Um, really, I don't have a preference on it. Some people do. Some people find that if you push away from yourselves that you're going to, because of the pressure you do, sometimes you can go away from yourself and you're not going straight. So we can pull down from here. So we're going to dot down the center and then we're gonna pull that paint down all right now that is as far as I've gotten with my paint no big deal I'm gonna go back again into the center and I'm going to pull down just like that okay and then from there I'm going to take a bit of the paint on my stylus swirl it around and I'm gonna Pull, and then I'm going to pull at a little bit of an angle so that I'm going towards that center line, okay? Just like this. So see, so I got half. It's almost looking like a music note. And then on this side, because you have so much paint in here to play with, you can push that around anywhere you really want to. You don't want to be literally scratching at the paper. You want to lightly swirl it so that you're barely touching the paper. And then on this side, we're going to do the same thing. So right where that round corner starts to taper, we're going to pull that and you're going to do like a C shape. So you're going to go at an angle. You don't want to go straight down. You're going to curve it, okay, so it looks like a teardrop. And then you're going to curve that and then you'll pull some more paint. Okay, and I'm literally lightly pushing that paint around. I'm barely even touching the paper. Okay, so see that is a swoosh, a basic swoosh with a large mandala dotting tool. So that's, that's a number 15. This is pretty large, right? so we're going to clean this off. And then I'm going to move down in a size so you get the idea of how they start looking. All right. Um, from here, let's go down to a size 10. I like to use in between a size 12 right here and a size 10. So if you can see, let's see. Let's get that focused. Those sizes. The yellow one right there is the 12. If you can see, I use that one the most. Okay. And then here, if you can see that. All right. Let's get you in focus again. So let's do it. We're going to do a 10. We're, we'll skip over the 12 because 12 is very close in between these two. And again, so we're going to take our, our dotting tool and we're just lightly going to dip in that tray. Okay, get some nice amount on there. I say it looks like about a quarter of an inch that's on this dotting tool. See, there's about a quarter of an inch on the dotting tool. All right. And so we're going to take this and once again, we're going to dot 
Now, when I do my mandalas, I have my series of lines that I do on the mandala itself I make with my ruler. And so I know exactly where I'm going to want to place this on that. If you have a template that you use, if you use circles with a compass, anything, as long as you have, I mean, I can even just draw out a circle right now. It's not going to be the world's perfect circle, but we get the idea, okay? So we could basically use the edge of the circle, right, on that dotting line. And then we're going to dot it just enough so that, one, you get your nice cohesive circle. You want a nice circle, but enough paint in there, all right? And then from there, I'm going to do the upwards motion this time so it looks like it's going towards the center of something. So with this one, I'm going to, let's see, let's move this closer so you can see it. Okay. And from here, I'm going to dot in the center and you're going to slowly pull away from you. Now that's all I got on there, so I'm going to dot again and the best you can and then lightly taper off. You don't want to pull too tight and then it's still, you know, a glop of paint there, all right? So, so we got all our paint here. Now again, on this side, we're gonna go at an angle. And if you don't get any paint the first time, that's okay. Just start pulling some from the center and then at an angle. So if I did this with a pencil, I would be doing, I'll do a pen so you can see it. I would be doing something like this. Oh, right? Of course my pen don't work. There we go. And then on this, that side, I'd be doing something like this. So if you can imagine yourself doing that motion, even with a pen, if you're doodling and you're not painting, just keep practicing that motion with your fingers, holding your pen. It's the same thing as holding, you know? And then you're just doing these, like, it looks like you're drawing a tree almost. See? Okay. And then, well, so you know that, okay, well, I'm going to, dip it now in paint, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull it towards the center of the line. And you really just want to make a nice, you want to keep that thin line down here. So really from, I'd say, a couple little, you know, ticks in from there, you're going to want to start curving it. All right. And that's how you would do that. Um, let's uh, let's try an even smaller one. So say if I did this style, right? And then I want to make something a little smaller. So I'm going to try an, a size 6 with this. Let's see. This is a size... This is a size 6. Can you see that? That's a size six. Now, this one was going to be much smaller. I usually like to take my dotting tool and I swirl it around like that in my tray. This way, if I'm dotting down in, I'm getting it all around it at the same time. And then I dot one more time. And then I've got that little drop there. See it? And we're going to place this one next to it, a little bit up from the line. Then again, dab it so that you got your nice bubble. And now this side, I was going to just do this whole movement. So from the side of the dot right here, 
not so much the center, but the side. I'm going to pull it up, and I'm literally just going to follow that curve all the way up, just like that. And just make sure that negative space you have is fairly even. It all looks the same. And then this part, you just want to take this corner and start gradually pulling some of that paint up like that. And that's your side swoosh. And then you can do the opposite on the other side. So again, size six dotting tool. Dot a little bit above the line this time. And then do it again. And then from here, you're going to do that again. You're going to follow that curve up. Now, if you don't make it all the way up the first time, fine. Start again and pull up. And then on this side, just a tad towards that center. Center part meaning like the center of your shape, right about this area. So you pull towards that. And there you go. You have your three tiered shape, right? You have your threes, three tiers, teardrops. Um, trying to think of what other kind of swooshes can we make. I like these, so if I wanted to make this different kind of style, what I would do is I would get a little bit fairly bigger in size. I think this would be roughly about a size two dotting tool if I was to use the marks dotting tools, so something like this, all right? I personally like to make swooshes with the ball. For some reason, it catches more paint and it makes a nice, um, it makes a nice line too. So for example, this is a different kind of swoosh, which we wanna do is get a nice amount on your dotting tool, so like that, all right? And I'll show you here if it, sh if it lets me, lets me focus. <laughs> there we go. So, so see, I'm, I'm really swooshing it around and then I'm getting a nice amount on there, all right? And then this one I really like. Um, so what I would do is I dot and I don't pick it up. Do not pick it up. Just pull down. Just like that. There's no science to this. There's no, you know, I mean, yeah, this may take time. Maybe you could dot and then do like a crooked one or you could be like, you know, your hand's not steady, right? And you're going all over the place like that. <laughs> um, maybe you don't have enough paint on it Let's try if we just dot it real quick with not a lot of paint. Dot it and pull. See, you don't have a, it's not a big swoosh. It's not a long one, I should say, right? And then if you try to go back over it, it kind of gets thick. Like it doesn't look nicely tapered like that. So I would just suggest remembering to have a nice amount of paint. If it's also extremely thin, you know, it, it might really glop, especially doing this style I'm doing and you might have a really big one. So worst case, you just erase it. You take a Q-tip with some water and you remove it while it's wet. Anyway, back to this though, what I do like is, so if I did one down, then I would start where that tapered off and then I'd pull up like that and then end where that top part is. And usually I would have my circle lines like this on my mandala, right? And so I know to start up here and then pull down. If I don't get it all the way, it's okay. And if I really wanted to make it like absolutely perfect, I would just take a smaller stylist and maybe lightly just pull that down, just like that. And then the next one, I would dot at the bottom and I would pull up. See, I still even struggle with pulling up. Sometimes my hand gets a little shaky and it kind of jumps itself. But, you know, within practice and keeping a steady hand, you get the hang of it. 
I think the best thing is to just keep trying it. Try these exercises before you jump into a gigantic project. You know, for beginners, this could be extremely overwhelming and you're not understanding how to do certain uh, techniques and then you try to do a huge thing and you are frustrated, you know? So my best thing would be is to, you know, I know a couple people have some downloads for paper that you can do this on paper and they already have the swoosh. I think that's fantastic and um, I'm sure on Etsy you can find them. Um, I personally think finding your own niche and not relying on a shape to to draw it, it kind of it kind of restricts you from from finding your type of technique and your craft. Um, everybody's different. Everybody has different styles. So, you know, um, that's what makes art so wonderful. Is that everything is it could look the same, but it's different because everyone has their own style. Everyone has their own color choices, etc. you know? So those are the small ones. Um, I just recently did this. I wanna show you real quick. So you could see how small these I did on this mandala. They are super tiny. I can even zoom out so you could see. They're really tiny. Um, and uh, this one I did with the smallest stylus I have, which took a long time to do, but it was well worth it at the end because um, I had a really great, you know, pattern going on. I think really just have fun with it and play around with uh, different techniques, different styles. Um, there's also one called like a fantail. Fantails. Um, that's what I call them as fantails. They, let's see if I have one. I do. Let's see. This is considered a fantail. This one. Okay, so usually you have your dot in the center and then you have your swooshes on the outside. In order to achieve that style, all you would really need to do is uh, have a rather large dot in the center. So let's try it. I'm gonna use a number eight, just for a quick dot in the center. So we'll do one here, like that. And then erase, we're gonna clean that off. And then I'm gonna use the number two stylist again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look at the space I have from here to here, and from here to here. Now, you can simply draw a line if you choose to with a pencil or a pen so that you see the size of it because you really want to rely on that center one. That one is going to kind of keep you in line with the rest of them because they're all going to want to follow that leader. So if you dot above right there and pull down, and then from here, you're gonna dot at the bottom from here, and you're gonna pull up, okay? Let's move this so we're in screen, all right? This one too. And then again, we're gonna, we're gonna really swirl that around in our dish. And then next to it, at an angle, so as if you're making like an, a house, right? You have that A-frame. Um, so at an angle from there. So right about there. I'm not exactly next to it. I'm slightly down from it. And what I'm gonna do is that curve again. So I'm gonna go like this and curve. And I'm gonna end where the other one is. You wanna pretend that you almost have this imaginary negative space circle right around the perimeter of that. So if I do it again on the other side, I do it right here, and then I pull it down and stop, okay? Now I know this may look easy to some people, and a lot of people are saying, I try that, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, just keep practicing, please. Don't give up on it. You can do this. 
next one. So again, we're going at an angle. So here, right? There. And pull it and keep that curve going. So that your curve's gonna get a lot sharper. So this one is gonna be, so that one is gonna be just like that, but then you're gonna start getting deeper in that curve and deeper in the curve until you, it looks like something like that. Depends on how many you want and how big this will be too. This is a small one compared to what I have. And obviously you wanna make sure you have the same on either side. Even that's pretty cool design. Like if this was a different color down here, it's this is kind of a nice element to use at the end of your uh, mandalas when you're painting. It's pretty. But we'll do the same. So we have the center one and then we have three on either side for this one. So again, we're gonna do this again. So from here, we're gonna go in, right? We're not gonna go down. You wanna always be shorter than your center one. And we're gonna curve just a tad. And again on this side, curve just a tad. And then again. Perfect. And then again, one small one. And there you go, see? So you made your, that's like a, I guess I would, I'm not sure what I would call it. I just call them fantails. <laughs> I don't know what the terminology is. You can also just do one side. So if you had your dot in the center, right? Like that. And then you can go up like that. And you can go at the side and the side and the side and the side and keep going, right? I've been doing these for many, many years, so they come natural to me. They, you know, I can bang these out real fast, but when I first started, it was extremely hard to do. And I was in the same boat as every other beginner that did this. And I just want to encourage you so much to just keep please trying it. And um, you'll be so rewarded in the end when you actually get this down pat. So, so there, there's another element, see? So, and in, in this one could potentially rest on a line like that. And you can have one right here and here and etc. cetera. Um, there are so many different ways to do swooshes. Um, I think for the time being, as, as uh, if you are a beginner, I think the best ones are to do the teardrops right here and try different sizes. Maybe try your hand at this small one so that you're, you're learning how to go down and you're also learning how to go up when you need to. Um, because, you know, they can definitely put different pressures from your hand movement. Um, this one's great also because it teaches you to uh, stay, you know, balanced within these uh, curves and making sure that they're not overlapping and becoming one big swoosh. Um, and then as you get advanced, you can start doing some of these fantails and really, uh, you know, playing with different things. Um, I hope this helps everybody. I, was, I just really wanted to make a quick video on uh, how you do swooshes. So um, good luck to you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them the best I can. So uh, take care. Happy dotting, guys.